I'm Fred Duran from Primo Line Kennels. Uh, we're located in Southern California, Ventura County, Oxnard, California. When you when I look back and like now I'm a little bit older, you know, I'm different right now than I was five years ago, you know. And right. um, looking back at it, I'm like, man, I look at his daddy and I'm like, not just because he was my dog and I produced him or whatever, but uh, I look at him and I say, man, I, that dog could have granted. Like, right. damn, that dog could have earned a champion title. Like, that dog could have went all the way, you know. He's right. a really nice dog. His daddy's nice. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't, bro. Like, you know, I said, no, it can be a little bit better. better. And later on, later on, I'll show you like the video. I'll shoot you the picture in the video. So that way you can, you can yeah. pop it in here. You know what I mean? Some yeah, pictures of sure. the video of them. I'm um, not just saying it to say it. I, I love the dog, but I just felt like I could make it a little bit better. And the the details that I'm talking about, when I s point them out to people and, and, and break this down as to why, they people look at it. me like they're, like they're ready to slap me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, yeah. it's so like, and I'm like, but that's how picky I am. Like, right. if I'm going to bring something to the ring, if I'm going to spend the time, the money away from my family, like if I'm going to do these things and invest myself into it, I'm just going to do it to the best of my ability. Like, yeah. I, to the best. I'm not going to settle. You know what right. I mean? I think they, they deserve that, you know? Like, right. the, the dogs deserve it. My family deserves it. I want to make it worth my time to do. So um, it was a really difficult process because he's like fifth generation, like our dog, mm. you know, because we still like, like um, when I had the opportunity to own Saki, Saki came to us and I already owned a Saki son. Right. Um, I already owned a Saki son who was like going on two, two or three by the time I acquired Saki. Um, and I had already bought two girls and bred to Saki twice, I believe. Like, you know what I mean? Before right. I even owned I was invested in that blood. Like that's what I wanted. Like I said, right. it's crazy that you asked me that because that was that was exactly what he was. Yeah. Um, and so we we um, I had that Saki son that I got from Ponch too, and uh, his name was Chief. So we had we had Saki, and then we we owned Chief, and then from Chief um, we bred Chief to a Manu daughter uh, named Country, and uh, and we got Ruthie, who's on paper it's Sunday Serenade, but we called her Ruthie. Um, and then I kept, I kept that, uh, I kept Ruthie with me and her brother's actually still, still with one of my cousins. Um, we kept Ruthie and we bred Ruthie, uh, to her first cousin on the other side, like, um, to, uh, to countries like Littermate sister's son. Um, and then I got Kane and Kane is Dooley's daddy. And then I bred Kane to a Saki daughter and got Dooley. So on the top of Dooley's pedigree, like we've owned like like he's like fifth generation our dog you know nice. um so it took a long time and it, in the process i didn't just breed like that like i guess i didn't just breed that down like that i was branching off breeding Saki still and trying different things to try to better what i had because we started i mean with grand champion Saki bomb and i was like well I, I don't want just another grand champion we wanted a better one right um, and i felt like i could make it better right and, uh, you know, Ponch, Ponch believed in my ability. Ponch believed in like our passion and, and yeah. trusted us to say, hey, take the dog and, you know, keep it going. That was that was what he would. That's uh, that's the phrase he would always use is keep it going. Like, keep yeah, it going. Right. I think it, it was it was a big deal to me when when that dog came to me and the way it came to me, you know, the dog, um, the dog was a gift. He could have sold the dog. Wow. Um, and he, he told me, just come get him, dude. I don't I got this going on. I got that going on. Just just come get him, you know, wow. and uh, I ended up going to get him and he signed him over to me and was like, just, just keep it going, dude. Like take care of it, you know, do it, do it right. Yeah. And, um, I promised him I would and <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I always wanted to honor that, you know what I mean? Cause it was yeah. such a precious gift to me. That dog meant so much at the time. He had put so much into him and like all this, like atomic yeah. dog cover had already gone down. Like, you know what I mean? It's Dang. like, it, I, I couldn't imagine like having my prize, like boy that's sitting right here at my feet right at that point. Like yeah. I can sit right here, yeah. but I can't see him. But I could imagine saying, you know what, I don't have the time for this and having to trust somebody, the level of trust that right. it would take and the truck the level of confidence it would take in somebody for me to say like that and go and do it and give it Oh dude, I, I don't know if I could do it. That's a punch, man, for for really believing in me and and uh and, and trusting us with that because um without that without that trust, without that promise and confidence, like we wouldn't I wouldn't be here right now with him. You know, I wouldn't be here with Dooley. Yeah. You know, sure. it, it would it would be different. What was it about Dooley, man? Like as a pup? What what uh what did you see? Did you keep the whole litter? Did you just pick him out? How did that go? No, it was actually I, I bred this litter very intentionally. Like even before, because I knew what I knew the female I was gonna breed. Like I knew his mama. I was like my my mom actually raised his mom. Like yeah. as a puppy, I took her on a pup back deal from from a good buddy of mine. Shout out to Manny at Fireblood Bullies and Curtis. 
Yeah. Um, they shot me a putt back from Saki and their and their girl Suba, and um, uh, I had a lot going here at the time, and um, I just my mom and my sister were living by themselves at the time. My sister I think was like 17, 18 at the time, and my mom and they just lived down the block. Like li we live on the same street. She's just at the other end of the street. Right. And um, there's a lot of foot traffic on that end and stuff like that. So I was like, hey mom, have her at the fence, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, and, right. Uh, you know. So I already knew what girl I was gonna breed. It's just coincidence that my mom raised his dog but uh or raised his mom but um yeah uh i could have bred her back to saki i could have used an outside dog because she i could use an outside dog i could have i could have line bred her um i could have done different things with her and i was like what can i do to give me the, the best chance what can i do with this girl because i knew she was special to give me the best chance to get like where i want to be you know right. I, I thought to myself saki's a really complete dog he was older already like 10 ish nine-ish or something like that. And I said, well, we can inbreed him. I haven't done it yet. And we can see what pops because she has a lot of those nice features that he does and the things that I wanted from his from his side. Um, and then looking at the studs that I had like co-owned and, you know, around, and I was like, man, this is the most complete one though. And I haven't used him like yeah. Dooley's dad Kane. Man, yeah. he was five years old. I never bred him. And what? still to this day, he's like eight years old now and I haven't bred him again. Like, what? he's like, mm quality over quantity. I bred it with the intention, you know, to, to produce a grand champion and a dog that I could campaign and, and like go all the way with. And um, I decided that it would be, I think a little more fruitful. And I think I would, could take a little more pride and be more proud of a dog that I produced with two dogs that I produced instead right. of just going to my grand champion and expecting another grand champion to pop out. Cause that's what everybody wants to do. Right. Or everybody thinks, you know, should happen. I just, I went the long route, you know, and, and use my tools to, to put it together. Um, uh, to make it happen and I remember telling my wife I don't even my family and stuff they were having like a like a pool on the chalkboard on the on the you know how many puppies she was gonna have six seven yeah, this many yeah, girls yeah. this many boys and 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 all that good stuff and I said I hope she has like 10 boys I don't have no interest in no girls like right. I don't want a girl like I want a boy to campaign and I right. hope I have like 10 of them to choose from I don't care about a female and it was funny funny enough she had six males and she didn't have any any females so i had wow. a, a litter of pure boys like to pick from right um and i didn't really know like right off what what this dog was gonna be or what to really expect i just knew that i wanted to take my time in picking because it was a big deal for me i knew that there was a lot of potential in the breeding looking at both of the parents are very very complete dogs like yeah. from some really cool blood that even people that breed the same blood didn't yield the same results as i did so wow. i consider myself really fortunate like really right. fortunate um uh you know and and highly favored <laughs> because i know i i've seen plenty of people do similar stuff and not come close to the same thing and and my wife really was uh, was the one that was like there's a video I'll show you. I'll send you that one too, where she was trying to take pictures of all the puppies, like individual pictures of the puppies. And I don't even think they were three weeks old at the time. And she was like, look, he's giving me a hard time. He doesn't want me to take his picture. He wants to stay. He was, oh, I think you're the shoot. one that's going to stay. And wow. he had just barely opened his eyes and she was bugging me. And I'm like, dude, the dog has to move well. Like he hasn't even walked. Like, right. you know what I mean? Right. Just let him get up and walk and then we'll make the picture. She was like, I just think this is the one that you're going to take. He's like, she could see things that I couldn't see yet. Right. Um, and then just me being who I am, like being really particular, like, nope, being really patient and waiting. Time ain't going to do nothing but put us in a better spot. So I have right. all the time in the world when it comes to picking the pups, you know? Yeah. Um, and then it just came down to, it just came down to, um, to picking, uh, really, because uh, I, I pick a little bit different than other people. People are like, well, I pick. I, I, I did this breeding for head. I did this breeding for like tight feet. I did this right. breeding for this or that, right? And I kind of look at things backwards when it comes to that because I'm familiar with the lines and I know what's coming out. And if I've seen something, I'm not breeding stuff in because they already have all the stuff that I want. What I'm trying to do is on the, on the, to the contrary is breed things out. So if I see like a feature in their rear that I don't like, like a, a certain movement, or if I see their feet a certain shape or, and I'll knock them off. And the last man standing is typically my pick. And if the last one has things that are like a deal breaker for me, well, that one can go too. And I'm just going to chalk it up. I'm not going to force it. Like, right. You know? And I, if I didn't get what I was looking for and the potential is breeding, like I'm not going to force it and continue to breed just because it's the best one doesn't mean it's the best for me. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Um, so I'm, I'm really particular like that. And I've done that even like, for example, Dooley's dad, that yeah. litter that I produced in house, 
I didn't know what they were going to turn out like, and I wanted to make sure that I was breeding the right dogs in that litter because I've never seen the dogs bred this way. I've never seen this combination of blood. I've never seen this happen, so I didn't really know what to expect. So All it was right. difficult for me at the time to go, okay, well, I want 3500 for this puppy. I don't even know what it's going to turn out to be. Right. Like, I, and I like my sleep, bro. I'm not a bullshitter. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Right. I like my sleep, so I'm right. not selling dreams, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So I was really hard on myself, and I even, you know, probably pissed my wife off pretty good when I was like, nah, I'm not <laughs> going to sell them. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these dogs are born. You know, we we struggled with that litter, man. And, right. And in a little house then, and um, in a tiny house, it felt like we're their kids were still little, and you know, yeah. things like that. And I'm like, dang. Um, I ended up placing all of those dogs with friends and family, like all of them, except for the one that went back to my buddy Joe, who did the breeding with me. Right. So he he took one back. Uh, he took one back, and I placed the rest of them. Even two of them with my cousin, like his dad lives with, his, Dooley's dad lives with his littermate brother. Like they've never spent the night away from each other. Wow. They both left together. My uncle, my cousin took two two boys. Yeah. My cousin was originally supposed to just grab one. And then my uncle was like, I want one too. I was like, she take one, huh? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Take them. Uh, I need homes for them and I need them close, you know? So just take them. So they all stayed, bro. Like they all stayed. And I made sure that I bred the right one. Like right. I can call everybody right now from that litter and say, where's the dog? You where's know? the dog at? You got eight years later. Cause eight, in eight years later, because they're all my friends and family. I literally gave them away to my friends and family. On, um, I'm on Facebook. It's Fred Duran. Um, nothing real crazy. Um, and then and just Instagram. It's a uh, the... It's the G R C H, the Grand Champion underscore Fre uh, Fredito with a P H. Um, but yeah, you can. Uh, what's the? I'm trying to think of like some of the common hashtags that we use, like uh, G R C H mentality. The hashtag you can catch our page through there. Um, just G R C H that'll work too. Um, bully bullies, Primo Line Kennels hashtag. You can find us uh, where we're not hard to find, man. Everything's open and public. So nice, nice. Do you guys have any questions? Have any any? Uh, anything you guys want to tap in I'm, I'm always willing to share my experiences so feel free to reach out i try to make myself approachable and, and try to make it easy man so holler at me whenever